2017 saw many amazing titles, and for every Zelda, Mario, and Cuphead I delved into, there were at least five huge games that I never go around to playing, let alone reviewing. So, as we wade through the beginning of year doldrums, unless I'm willing to shout for Monster Hunter World, let's look at some of the titles I missed last year. Welcome to Season 8, and this is the Backlog. Released on the 23rd of February 2017 by Platinum Games and Square Enix on the PS4 and PC, Nier Automata went right over my head as I was still carrying down the days till this bad boy came out. But considering this series history, I'm not surprised I didn't notice it, as the original Nier was released back in 2010 to non-existent scores and sales. I was also a spin-off to a series called Draken Guard, like I've ever heard of that. But after putting in over a hundred hours into Hyrule, I decided to give my other console some loving and came across Nier's demo. My first reaction was... So it's... like... Bayonetta. Alright. My second reaction was... Oh my god, I need this game now! Unfortunately, when I did get in the mail, well, I was already back with other things. So, enough wasting time. Here's Nier Automata. Set thousands of years in the future, Automata opens with a squadron of fire jets, with each getting picked off one by one, until only one is left flying through- Okay, Platinum. We know you were shoehorned into making Star Fox Zero. We get it. You can make a flying game. No need to rub our noses in it, for God's sake. <sighs> The main character is 2B, who is called that as she possesses the body of one. But in actuality, she's an android sewing for a group called Yorha, whose mission is to save the planet from an invading alien force that unleash killer machines on humanity, who fled to the moon for safety. The combat of Oromara is fairly simple. Like I said earlier, it's just like Bayonetta, with both quick and hard attacks, dodging, and your pod assistant even having the ability to shoot. And unlike Bayonetta, these bullets actually work. They work great when enemies unleash all forms of bullet hell on your ass. While battling these machines, you're introduced to 9S, or as I to call him, perfect UK material. You continue on throughout an abandoned factory, taking out hordes of robots until you come across this Goliath of a boss, get into your aircraft, yank off its arm, and start playing an awesome version of Stop Hitting Yourself. Now, I would have loved the whole game to be this. But the main story has you land in the desolate remains of a city and join the local resistance. From there, you go around the map, unlocking access points, beating random machines, and buying new equipment to help you progress. Unlike something like Bayonetta though, there is no real hand-holding here. You have to heal yourself using recoveries, and if you die, you lose all your equipment, but can recover it from your own corpse. Die again before you do that, and it's gone for good. Then there is organizing all the plug-in chips you have, which is as fun as trying to mount several hard drives at once through three different servers. While offering things like auto-heal and increased critical hits, the game really doesn't help in explaining this though. When it comes to the design of the world, while it certainly tries to give the illusion of an open world, it's not as overwhelming as you think. Oromata's world may seem daunting at first, but in comparison to other titles, it's actually quite restrained with it really only taking up one major city, as opposed to other open world titles which take up half a bloody continent with only a thimble's worth of content. Even what feels like filler busy work side quests serve a greater purpose in opening your eyes to the many creatures that inhabit this place. Originally seeing machines as just soulless, mindless killers, you meet some who have grown past that to ones who have become pacifist, wanting to live a life of peace, even evolving to the concept of actual families. 
That being said, I can't give major recommendations in terms of the graphics, with the design of the building is looking all samey and blocky, like someone just ended up using the default textures in the game engine. And countless times when you want to jump on a certain platform or enter what looks like a building, only to face a myriad of invisible walls and surfaces. Makes you wonder what the hell they spend all their time working on. Which leads me to the most prominent aspect of the game. The design of the main character, 2B. I know she's prominent because everyone else talks about her. So, allow me just to do a quick Google search about her on my phone. 2B, image search, save search off. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, whoa. Whoa. Oh, man. Oh, whoa. <laughs> Hello. Oh, boy. Oh. Um, can we turn the cameras off just for a moment, please? We can't. Alright, I'll find time for my gym sock later. <laughs> um, so, uh, how to summarize this as civil as possible? Look at her butt. Hmm. So, uh, I, I will admit the designs are not something I would come up with for a post-apocalyptic game which makes me question the meaning of life and choices. Maybe more for a magical girl anime, but then again, I'm not Platinum Games. But I will give props to Automata's director Yoko Taro, who when questioned why 2B dresses more like a girl who's willing to service her master any means necessary, simply replies with, I just really like girls. That's the kind of honesty we need in this industry. No more snaking around the issue. No more of this she breathes through her skin crap. Just come out and say it! Cause I like high school girls, that's why! Uh, okay. Probably not that honest. That's too japanese -ian for me. But while Oromata's world may not seem too vast, you will be seeing everything way too much, as this game has five endings to achieve, which essentially demand several full playthroughs. Not to mention there are over 20 joke endings, which range from dying in the opening of the game to just saying fuck it and going fishing. <laughs> uh, what? Did you expect the special half-cousin of Jackbox to not be this bizarre? Uh, Regardless of that, Nier Oromara probably stands as one of the more unique titles of 2017 with its narrative and character design. And while it won't win any awards for its graphics, the combat and replayability do make up for it. And if I did manage to play it last year, it probably still wouldn't have cracked my top 10. But then again, it was just that stellar of a year. Now if you'll excuse me, I've got some business to attend to. <laughs> See you all next time. And don't judge me!